Questions over President Joe Biden's age and mental fitness have been swirling around before the 2024 presidential race even started, and it's making headlines once again. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Priscilla Casper. I'm JC Monahan. A special counsel report is characterizing the president as a, quote, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. NBC10 political reporter Matt Pritchard is in studio. So, Matt, let's talk about it. What do voters think of all of this? Well, it really depends on the generation that you're talking to. I mean, certainly those that are a bit older have some concerns about the fact that this is even being brought up. And when you talk with Gen Z or uh, Gen X millennials, they say it's a conversation that might be worth having. President Biden pushing back. I know what the hell I'm doing. A report on the commander in chief's handling of classified documents turning into criticism of his age and memory. A special counsel Robert Hur says in interviews, Biden was unable to remember key moments, including what year his son Bo died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Despite that rebuke, debate over the president's age is firing up yet again. But for seniors, it really upsets me because why? I'm 77, and I'm fun I think I'm a darn good, functioning 77-year-old. It's a conversation they say is misplaced. This ageism thing bothers me because people and people who are running in leadership roles should be measured by the outcomes. Massachusetts AARP echoing those comments and writing in a statement, quote, AARP believes there is no place for age discrimination in politics. Elections should be about a candidate's qualifications and stance on issues, not their age. As for Gen X and millennial voters. If any person had cognitive decline, that would be a concern. Maybe someone from a different generation making decision could be beneficial. They can see the need for the conversation, and not only when it comes to this current election cycle. Yes, it'd be a concern, but again, just are they able to do the essential functions of the job? I think the mentality has changed a little bit. I think the world has changed a little bit, and maybe they can't relate to it anymore. Voters head to the polls in nine months. Tonight at 530, we're going to talk with political analysts on both sides of the spectrum to hear how this could play a role as the campaign trail unfolds. In studio, Matt Pritchard, NBC10 Boston. All right, Matt, we look forward to that. Thank you. We want to bring in now NBC10 political commentator Sue O'Connell. Sue, Robert Hurt was asked to find out if there was any criminal wrongdoing with regards to Biden's personal possession of those classified documents. Well, he found none, they concluded. It's really everything else he included in that report about Biden's age and memory that's really causing a stir. How do you imagine something like this going over with voters? Yeah, Priscilla, so to your point, you know, Biden gets a victory and somehow it's turned into a loss while Trump is going to trial and somehow that's turned into a win for him, right? So that's the upside down world that we live in. Look, and I'm not really sure how it's going to go over with voters, but I, like Matt Pritchard, would like to ask them what they're going to think about, what they're going to consider when they go into that voting booth in November. Is Biden's age and alleged memory problems the most important issue to you? Is Trump's alleged criminal activity and liability for sexual abuse and defamation twice? Is that the most important issue to you? Do either of these issues impact the candidate's ability to enact and deliver the kind of America you want? These two men are likely going to be the choice we have in November, like it or not. So think about what's important to you. So there are reports that Biden was very angry about her findings. We heard him during a press conference last night. You mm -hmm. could hear that anger. But what apparently made him the angriest was what was written. And I'm, I'm going to quote here. He yep. did not remember even within several years when his son Bo died. Did her go too far? Did he try and put his thumb on the scale? Yeah, Priscilla, I spent some time today at the Department of Justice website reading some other reports to see how common it is to list the investigators' reasons for not pursuing a case. And I didn't see any kind of opinion like that that was included in this report, which makes it seem gratuitous to me. Look, it, it was unrelated to the investigation. It seemed filled with opinion that was not related to the reasons her deemed that no action should be taken against Biden. Her is not a geriatric doctor, and I'm sure he's interviewed hundreds and hundreds of subjects who have mixed things up or forgot things or said they couldn't remember. And I doubt that he included those types of opinions in other people's reports. I know sometimes I can't even remember what I did Monday, you know? Right. Um, so what we've seen, older people are the most consistent voting group in the country. Do you think there is a chance that this effort on the right to dismiss Biden as old backfires? Or has that argument ever been effective in a presidential race before? Well, it certainly has been a conversation 
we've had older people like, you know, Massachusetts lawmaker Senator Karen Spilka. She happens to be 71. Or House Speaker Robert Mariano. He happens to be 76. I think they probably have some thoughts about this. Look, in 1984, 73-year-old candidate Ronald Reagan was asked if he was too old to be president. And Reagan said, quote, I will not make an age and I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I'm not going to exploit it for political purposes. My opponent's youth and inexperience. That's what he was talking about. Of course, Senator Bernie Sanders, he was 78 when he was running for president. When asked if he was too old, he answered, quote, follow me around the campaign trail. And then, of course, Senator Elizabeth Warren was 70 when she ran for president. So as Reagan proved, Age is just a number, Priscilla. Age is just a number, but that's definitely something we're going to be talking about Absolutely. for a while. Sue, thank you so much. And you can hear more from Sue every Sunday morning on At Issue. She and our Corey Smith will take a deep dive into the top political headlines of New England and beyond. At Issue airs every Sunday morning right after Meet the Press here on NBC10 Boston. You can also listen to the latest episode of our new Taking Issue podcast. We post new episodes every week. You can listen on NBC10Boston.com slash at issue, or you can stream episodes wherever you get your favorite podcasts.